I believe it is time. Oh, brother. Who are you? Stop it, you scungy bitch. Are you ready? I asked over the last week for everybody to ask me anonymous questions about dating, like relationships, all sorts of stuff like that. So this is the, uh, me, this is me uh, answering your dating questions. I made it very clear that these questions are anonymous. So when people ask me questions like, why haven't we ever been on a date? Who are you? I don't know who you are. The, the answer might be we have. Our first question of the day is, do I think that looks matter more than personality? And the answer, my answer would be no. I don't think looks matter more than personality. However, if I were to say that looks don't matter, I would be lying. Because let's be real, unless you are blind, everybody is judging everybody else based on the way that they look a little bit. You can say that you never do, but you're lying. You do a little bit. Everybody does a little bit. If you're going to date someone, if you're, if you're swiping the apps or if you're in a bar looking at someone and you see someone on the horizon, you're like, mm hmm or you see someone's photo, yeah, and that, that's what gets you first, then you have admitted that looks matter a little bit, right? Because they obviously do. Because you're like, oh, that person's pretty. Looks definitely matter a little bit. But overall, in the grand scheme of a proper big old relationship, you know, unless you're going for a one night hookup stand, then personality always matters more. The only time personality doesn't matter more is if you're Leonardo DiCaprio. And then it's just, are you under 25? Check. Genuinely curious about what you look for in a partner, comma, preferences, comma, likes and dislikes. Sincerely, someone who's crushed on you in a while. I look for someone that takes good care of themselves, especially personal hygiene. I look for someone who is uh, generous, especially with their time, uh, remembers things that I like and doesn't need to be constantly reminded. Someone who takes initiative isn't gonna be like all the time like, oh no, I'm cool with, you know, whatever you want. The number one thing that will make me pay attention to someone, these are not states, it's a bare minimum. That's what I'm saying, it's really not that is like good personal hygiene. If you have a nice cologne, well kept, like especially eyebrows, eyebrows are the window to the soul. Also someone who can maintain their personality for more than three months before it all crumbling because they are, uh, because that's uh, a key instigator that they're putting on a personality um, just to uh, entertain the person that they're dating as opposed to actually being a good person. Would I be upset if someone without being asked kept a document of the things you like because they struggle to remember? Absolutely not. I think that that's really, really sweet. In fact, I keep lists on a lot of my friends. If they have mentioned stuff that they like, it's probably in a list on my phone so I can buy it for them for Christmas. <laughs> Anyone who has mentioned even one thing that they ever like around me that I consider a close friend, you're on my list. And if it's, you know, a partner, they have their own specific list, right? Sporting activity dates as a first date, why slash why not? For me, no, because I hate that. <laughs> but in general, like if, if you guys both have a shared interest in like, I don't know, kayaking or something, rock climbing, go for it. If you have a shared interest, then you're gonna enjoy that. And first of all, sporting activities and, and, and endorphin generation on a first date is just gonna make both people think that the date went well because you got the endorphins running, that's good. However, if your partner or the person that you're considering dating is not super into uh, sporting activities, then don't take them on a first, on, 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 uh, to, on a hike on a first date because they're gonna have a fucking miserable time. If, if it's a shared interest, then go off. If it's not, maybe don't do that. Would I ever date a couple? No, I wouldn't. Dating one person is difficult enough for me. Dating two people, that's... I just don't have the mental wherewithal to date more than one person. I'm a monogamous person. It's difficult enough to schedule hanging out with one person. But dating multiple people, like I can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. If you're polyamorous and you're and you're open about it, you know, and, and everybody's cool with that, then that's fine. I'm just I just couldn't do that because I would simply die. <laughs> I would would not be able to organize that. My brain would collapse. 
first date alternatives to restaurant slash bar. Oh, brother. I am usually like super anti first date at a bar. If that is your suggestion to me, I will probably decline the date because first dates at a bar to me are overdone and I don't like the fact that um, it's socially reliant on alcohol to lubricate the conversation. If I can only have a conversation with you when there's alcohol involved, then I'm not interested. I freaking love art galleries. Hit me up with that. That's hot. Let's go. Vincent van Gogh, I'm there. I love discussing art. Art is not just about the medium, but it's about the way that you perceive it. You can look at a piece of art and be like, do you see a dick in that painting? And then the other person's like, hey, hey. and then you're having fun. Picnics, I think is, is good. I think a picnic is, is cute and nice, especially if it's just like a few snacks, you know, and and some some beverageinos, even just sparkling water, that's, that's a vibe. A cute, a, a cute outdoor, outdoorsy thing is always fun. Gaming arcade, like with the claw machines and stuff. Cause you can get competitive at those if you want to, or you can, you can do co-op and you can teamwork. Anything that's like a fun activity, you know, those painting dates where you like do a painting and then have paintings afterwards. That's cool. Love that. Cinema? No, no, no. You gonna talk in the cinema? No. Oh. Zoo, aquarium, yes, Joker. Zoo, aquarium, for sure, absolutely. Axe throwing, maybe second date, maybe not first date. Pottery, yes, the little pottery wheel stuff, absolutely. Escape room, a little bit difficult. Dinner, yeah, like dinner, I think is good. Dinner, I think is good because you like can actually talk and it also like, you can, yeah, you can tell a lot about someone by how they interact with serving stuff, for sure. I take, I take a restaurant over a bar anytime and a picnic over a restaurant <laughs> because then it shows me as well that you know how to prepare that and i love that you know that's that's a little bit of effort sailing no because then you can't leave if it sucks how do i how do you get back into dating after a breakup you take time for yourself until you feel comfortable with the concept of bringing somebody else back into your life because you don't want to be dating someone just so you're not alone. That's a terrible idea. What if I'm in a relationship but I feel in love with another woman? <sighs> Imagine them shitting. Be honest with yourself and your partner about it because otherwise you're being disingenuous. If you're in a relationship and you're imagining dating somebody else or being in love with somebody else, then that is something that you need to talk to your partner about. This is why anonymous question forms are a, a big risk. Hi, baby. How do you misspell the word hi? It's two letters. Hi, baby. I like you. I dream about you so much that I crave you. You are sexy. Hi. Are you joking? Good question. Yeah, great question. Biggest age gap you would date? I don't think I'd date someone younger than me. I would feel weird about that, even if it's just by one or two years. Maybe one year, but I think that I would feel weird about that. The older you get, the less it matters. Yeah, but like, I, I think it's about like the difference in the time of someone's life, you know? I, I think it's, it's like about where someone's at in their life, not necessarily how old they are. Fuck, younger men are freaking barely emotionally cognizant yet. No offense, but full offense. I know that women have to mature faster than men. That's just how society works. Maturity is the importance to me. As long as they're both consenting adults, I think is something that someone who's trying to justify dating an 18 year old would say, but I would never do that because they're a fucking teenager. Get away from me. <laughs> a 16 year old dating a 19 year old would be cringy, but a 36 year old dating a 39 year old wouldn't even get a response really. Yeah, but that's because the 16 year old and the 19 year old is very close to one of them being a child. And that's like, not okay. It's all about like the way that someone emotionally matures to me. And I've met, people younger than me that are emotionally super mature. Um, and I've met people older than me that are also emotionally super mature, but I've also not. I've also met people older than me that are freaking incapable of apologizing without being like, oh, it was actually secretly your fault. Like, um, chill. Do you want to see a great graph that will upset you? It's a woman's age versus the age of men who look best to her and a man's age versus the age of women who look best to him. As 
as you can see on the right, we have a woman's age versus the age of men who look best to her, right? 20 year old woman, 23 year old man. 30 year old woman, 30 year old man. 40 year old woman, 38 year old man. You know, it kind of peters off over here at about 50 where it kind of goes this way a little bit. But it, as you can see, the woman's graph is pretty much linear, right? Women tend to find men about their age relatively, you know, uh, the most attractive to them. Versus the men's graph, which flatlines. This is a Leonardo DiCaprio-ass graph here. A 42-year-old a, a man finds a 20-year-old woman the most attractive to him. Men just got broader range. I don't fucking think they do, mate. From here, it looks like a man's rage is between 20 and 24, which is, and this is true, four years. Whereas a woman, 23 to, what's the highest, 40 here? That's like old enough to be your dad. That's a graph from OkCupid. So that is actual, people's actual dating preferences on OkCupid. It's the best way to meet dateable people in 2024. In my opinion, it's to not seek them out and continue doing you. It's to seek out social situations and not dating situations specifically. Don't go hornily looking at a rock climbing group to date people. Go, if you're into rock climbing, go and try and make friends and maybe something will happen organically. Don't act like a lion eyeing up a gazelle. Oh my God, it's literally so obvious when people are there like just to get their horny on. Stop it! We can see, we're not stupid. It's disgusting. Just be friends with people. Be normal, it's not hard. Like, just be friends with people. Looking specifically for someone to date, I just think it's a terrible idea because you're dating them because you want to date someone. You're not dating them because you like them specifically, right? All right, here's my favorite question that I've ever received. Does size matter? But the way that the question is phrased is, do you like a penis or small? <laughs> <laughs> do you like a penis or small? I don't know. And you know what? This is what I brought a prop for. Let me show you something. This is six inches. Perfectly fine. This is four inches. Even that. Fucking who cares? This is 10 inches. Where is this going? Not in here. People are so conditioned, and, and by people I mean mostly guys, to think that their dick is not an adequate size because p makes you think that this is fucking normal. I tell you what this is, painful is what this is. Even like seven is pushing it a little bit. This is the thing is like, if, if everyone's lying about their size, stop lying. If the first thing that you're gonna do to me is lie, then I'm gonna think that everything that you do is a lie and I'm not gonna wanna, I'm not gonna wanna engage with that anymore. It's about the motion of the ocean. Exactly, Snowy. Again, if you're only caring about someone for their physical attributes, then that's on you and not on the person. I'm not even lying, the best sex I've been with guys on the smaller side, big dicks hurt. Preach, sister. Preach, sister. Preach. How do you deal with being nervous around people when going on a date? I feel like being nervous around someone that you're excited to get to know is completely normal. It's 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 kind of cute. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a little, a little cute when people are like stumbly a little bit, you know? Yeah, it, you're human. Everyone's human. Don't treat them like they're gonna be a perfect, you know, Prince Charming knight in shining armor straight out off the, like straight out the gate. They're probably gonna be like, ooh, ooh, you know? Maybe said out loud to take the pressure off. Just a little bit, you know, be like, man, I'm, I'm really, you know, I've been really looking forward to this. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> That's cute. Oh my God. If someone said that to me on a date, I'd be like, no. <laughs> I, I think it's, a, it's, it's very much a practice thing. You just gotta keep putting yourself out there until eventually you become more comfortable at, at talking to people like that. You know, I, would still get nervous going on a date with someone that I found super cute. I'd probably even still get nervous if it was someone that I'd been dating for like a year, you know? And I was like, oh my God, do you like me? Actually, it's an honesty and openness thing. That is a green flag for me. I have a question. When your partner is upset with something, you don't know what it is. How long is too soon to ask what's wrong and how long is too long? The second that you can tell that someone's upset, you talk to them about it. Don't know that they're suffering and then wait. That sucks. 
Yeah, don't badger or give space if you need. If you think... No, no, no. If you think you've done something wrong, figure out what it is and then talk to the person about it. Exactly. Don't play games with emotions. Don't let anyone play games with yours. What if they expect you to know what is wrong or refuse to tell you what it is? Get a new partner that communicates better. I can tell that something is bothering you. Would you like to talk about it? Slash, is there anything I can do to help? That's facts right there. Exactly, Phil. There's never too soon to ask. You just have to give them space not to talk about it if they want, don't want to slash aren't ready. Exactly. If they refuse to communicate, that's playing games. We just established we don't do that here. Facts. Facts and logic. Destroyed. Destroyed with facts and logic. And you know what else? All right, let me, I'm getting up on my high horse right now. Mm -hmm. You know what's really important, chat? Learning to apologize properly. Let's assume in this situation that we have done something wrong. You apologize, explain what you did wrong, how you are going to fix that in the future, and what you are going to do to fix it now. That is a proper apology. What we do not say in an apology is, I'm sorry that you are upset because you're already offsetting somebody else's uh, feelings as the actual problem. Don't reflect it back, to, back onto them. I didn't think it was that important to you. Shut up. It doesn't matter right now. They're clearly very upset right now, okay? Thoughts on one night stands and if you'd go on a date and you absolutely vibe and click on all levels imaginable, like it feels like movie like perfect, would you, or are you kind of like a mo Are you asking if I'd have sex with someone on the first date? Fucking why not? Who cares? If someone's really cool and I like them a lot, then why not? I personally don't think that uh, sex should be shuttered as, you know, oh, I'm going to wait for the one to have sex because, like, why? Why? I'm not religious. I don't care. I don't think that God's watching me, you know, and judging me for doing that. And even if I did think that, that's a kind of weird thing for God to care about. If God's gonna watch, he could at least give some tips, right? <laughs> Obviously, I don't think, you know, it's something that should be given out frivolously. I don't think you should just like fucking, you know, have sex without considering that there are definitely consequences to that action. I don't think it's something that you should get hung up about. As long as you're safe and everyone is consenting, and you know you're 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 making sure that there is there is like protection used if you don't want to have a baby then like or get an STI then go off who fucking cares I, I I think it's 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 something that you should not put so much stress on yourself about people have way 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 too many experience like things shamed about them like all the time the size of your boobs if you have or do not have hair how big your dick is how tall you are if you're a virgin or not how many people you've had sex with how much money you make how long your fingernails are even sometimes the color of your skin your religion your lack of religion like People are shamed about so many things that whether or not you are a virgin or have had sex with a lot of people, it just should not be one that we care about, right?